Not everyone in the design community is going to agree with me, but you need to hear my unpopular design opinions. Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, I am sharing with you my unpopular design opinions. Now you know I'm a formally trained interior decorator and on this channel I love to teach you about interior design, realistic design for your spaces, and what's gonna fit your personal style. Not mine, yours. And that's why I'm making this video because I wanna share with you some of the things that I see that I love, some of the things I hate in every design style that I just don't get, I don't understand, but at the end of the day, you need to do you. In order for you to do you, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you have the bell notification turned on to get notified every time I upload, and let's get into the video. Now the first unpopular design opinion I have is that I cannot stand sticking to one style. It creates a space that's bland, that's generic, that's a little bit boring, especially when your architecture matches the furniture. It just feels like no one lives there. It feels like a museum. It feels like a store catalog. And while that's nice and we always want our homes to feel beautiful and polished and like they came out of a magazine, there's a difference between a catalog and a magazine. A magazine is real homes. It's designers that have had touches on them that make them look cool. But like a catalog is just sales. That's just being sold things. We don't want our homes to look like that. We want it to look real. And when you have a space in the architecture and furniture that matches everything together, for example, if you have a Victorian home and all Victorian furniture, I'm sitting there waiting for Annabelle to pop out around the corner. <laughs> Annabelle, sweetie, no offense. I'm sorry about that. Uh, please don't come murder me in my sleep. And if you don't, I promise I will get you like a, a moisturizing hair treatment, a deep scalp treatment to work on those thirsty little ends and we will make it work, honey. Love you. Mm. Anyway, it just creates a space that can be very bland, very boring, and very impersonal. And not necessarily, I don't mean to say your space is like bland or boring, but it doesn't, it's not telling me anything about you. It may tell me about some old timey Victorian lady or Ferris Bueller on his day off, but like you don't live in that house. You live in your house, you live in your space, you live your life. Put the kids' drawings on the refrigerator. Like that tells me more about you. It says something about you. It's going to remind you of something you love, something you enjoy. So mix it up a little bit. Throw an antique piece in, throw a mid-century piece in. Postmodern is really in and very cool right now. Maybe you like Art Deco. All of those styles can mash and blend well together and create a space that's really cool, not just something that's very on point for that style or trendy at the moment. I actually did a full video on how to combine interior design styles that I will link in the description box for you down below so you can check that out and get a mix of styles that will reflect you. My next unpopular design opinion is that you need to make sure you're getting value for the advice you're receiving. You're not just being sold. And there's a lot going on on the internet with trends and social media where people will say, this is the one thing that fixes everything. You have to have this. This is gonna make your space beautiful. This, this, this. We get paid for sales. We sell things, we get paid for them. Be sure you're getting advice and you're not just getting sales. People aren't just telling you this is the magic pill that's going to fix everything. It doesn't work in any situation. That's not how it is. Each space is individual, like the people that live in them. One size fits all design advice doesn't work for everyone. You have to do what's right for you, your space, and your home. And when we have everybody's opinions thrown into the ring and we're not actually looking at a space individually as an individual, the design advice doesn't usually pan out well, and then I have to come back behind and clean up all the mess. At the end of the day, I wanna make sure the design advice you're getting fits you, because ultimately, a karate chop on a pillow does not a designer make, and it does not fit every space. So be sure you're getting advice that works for you, or you're taking it with that grain of salt. You're not just buying into the, this is going to fix everything for you mentality. My next unpopular design opinion is, is probably gonna get me the most heat, but that's fine, is that I hate, I absolutely hate painting antique furniture. What is wrong with people? What is happening? I will see people take the most gorgeous pieces of furniture, pieces of furniture that have actual value, that are real beautiful, that use exotic hardwoods and are just gorgeous, and they will just paint them like some 
awful color or it'll be like, paint it with chalk paint. Oh, I use this chalk paint by this company. And it's like, no, don't do it. Like the piece of furniture looks fine. Just like I said, mixing styles. If your style is farmhouse, you don't have to take that beautiful mahogany credenza and paint it white with some scuffed up edges. It, it doesn't need to be that way. You could just use it wood. That's fine. It will look amazing. It will add character and depth to the space. I literally saw someone who took the most gorgeous mahogany credenza, almost identical to the one I have, only theirs was antique, mine is new, whatever, but they painted it in pink. And I was actually like, oh, okay, you know, the pink is kind of cute, whatever. They then proceeded to stencil and it looked like it was like flocked of some like weird French design. It was just like a generic stencil. It literally destroyed this piece of furniture, this piece of furniture that was incredible hardwood that was gorgeous inlays and beautiful with amazing hardware, like everything. I think it was a Sheraton style buffet, which uh, anyway, but destroyed it. it. There's no point in doing it. It doesn't add to the piece. And the next thing I wanna say about that is when you find an amazing like inlaid piece of furniture and you're like, oh, I love this shape, I love the lines of it, and you find it on Facebook Marketplace for $50, girl, make sure there's not actual value before you go and like destroy a piece of furniture that somebody else would actually enjoy when you could have gone to like some little box store and got you something that looks exactly the same and painted and would have cost nothing, like whatever. Don't destroy antique furniture because the wood is not like your vibe. Some pieces are beyond repair that will have damage because a lot of them are very fragile and they might have damage to the veneer that can't be repaired. I've been in that situation, I get it. But those are the pieces, hey, you know, you can repaint that. You can paint the case and leave the drawers, uh, the wood tone. You can do some fun things with it. There's a happy medium that will get you the piece you're after and get you the style you want without having to completely redo a piece of furniture that's like a rare exotic hardwood that nobody can find anymore that isn't being grown because it's extinct that you just decide needs to be painted because it matches your little like whatever style, okay? Don't destroy beautiful pieces of furniture by painting them. Like if you get something that's just some generic pine wood furniture, paint it girl, nobody wants to look at the pine. Don't do it to walnut and mahogany. Don't do it to like exotic woods. It just does not, it, like sure the piece looks good but then in the long term, you just devalued that by so much. You just eliminated a part of history. Like, why? Would, what was the point? What was the reason? The next unpopular design opinion that I wanna share with you is that I absolutely love wall treatments, wall paper, paneling, molding, plaster, Venetian plaster. I absolutely love those finishes. And I think a lot of times they get a bad rap because they can be semi-permanent. But the reality is when you pick something that is neutral, that's a classic, that's a staple, it will not go out of style. If you pick a minimal color scheme for a wallpaper, that wallpaper is not going to be dated. It will work with a number of styles. It will fit the space and suit it well. When you look back at historic buildings and homes and you look at the wallpaper, the plastering and the colors used, they're still very much in today and popular because they were classics. We're talking about whites, ivories, creams, beiges, greens, even like a blushed pink is still very, very in today because it's classic. It's never going out of style. Those are always safe bets to make because they will add a lot to your space. They will create a layer and a detail in a very neutral way. The same thing goes for wall paneling. If you have really beautiful wood paneling, it's always timeless. Doesn't matter if it was from the 80s, the 70s, the 50s, the 40s, whatever. Wall paneling like that will always be good, but fake alternatives to it probably won't be. There's a time and a place for it. When, when we do a trend and we do it in a cheap way, it's when it does not become timeless and it doesn't last and have that longevity. When you invest in a good quality installation, good materials in a classic manner or way of installation, it's always timeless, always looks good, will work with every style and will actually serve as a really amazing feature in the long run as opposed to being something that's like super trendy. So don't be afraid to add a wall treatment or something. Like I know people are saying shiplap is out. Shiplap is not out. It was overdone for a little while, but it's not out. It doesn't ever look bad. It always looks good and it's timeless because it's just lines, that's it. It's the same thing with like b-board or chair moldings. Like maybe you're overseeing it because it's done a lot in your area, but that doesn't mean it's not timeless. That doesn't mean it's not classic. Maybe you go for something else and leave that chair molding for somebody who wants it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't look good or won't look good in the long run because it's been around for hundreds 
hundreds of years. And the reality is, if you look at some of the finest, most historic homes in the world, they have these elements. They're going to have paneling and molding and wallpaper. And if you look at some of the best designers in the world, the top rated people that are doing the most incredible work, they're also using these ideas and techniques. Whether that's lime wash paint or Venetian plaster, wallpaper, moldings, all of it. They're using it in their spaces because it's timeless, because it adds a layer and a detail. It can be expected or unexpected depending on the style of the space. Like a Venetian plaster, we saw it a lot with Tuscan design and it was like, oh, Tuscan design, we don't like that so much anymore. But Venetian plaster is actually really gorgeous for modern, contemporary, and postmodern spaces. It adds a lot of layering and detailing and something unique and interesting that will then add to those spaces. While it is a very expensive finish to put in, if it's done in a neutral color, we're seeing it a lot in like a pearl finish right now, like a, like a, a off-white color that's really gorgeous and very classic, it's not going to go out of style. My next unpopular design opinion is glass top tables. I have a love-hate relationship with glass top tables. I like them because we have some of the most iconic tables that are done in this. We see this done a lot with like postmodern. We saw the like Maitland Smith Whippets table. Uh, a lot of these that are like the Corinthian column style tables have glass tops. So we see a lot of really interesting tables that have glass tops on them, but glass tops are so difficult to keep clean, to keep them always looking good and fresh because sometimes we just don't have that lifestyle, okay? Who do I look like getting on the floor, cleaning underneath the bottom of a table? No, I'm not the one. And I have bulldogs. They're not, it's not that they don't understand the concept of glass, it's that they're spiteful. And if I don't do whatever they want, they're gonna just smear the little slobbery faces all over it. Love that for me, but not for the glass table. And unless you have your maid, like I do, and if you know, you know, and if you don't know, I will link the video down below where you can find out. But, but it's just difficult to maintain and clean a glass top table, whether it's a dining table, a coffee table, side tables. The good part about it is it doesn't take up a lot of visual weight because it's glass, because it's clear. But the bad part is the maintenance of it. You have to have like somebody help you flip the glass over so that you can clean it. And like, I'm not the one. I'm not getting upside down to clean a table. I'm not flipping glass over. It's too heavy. If I can't do it by myself, I'm not doing it. So I just don't like glass top tables from a maintenance perspective. I think they're a lot of work. I think they're a lot of upkeep. I don't think that they're great for everybody, especially if you're not the kind of person that can flip a glass top table over. You don't have someone to help you consider something else or consider something that has smaller glass inserts that will be easier for you to get to the bottom of and clean off when your dog smears his little face all over it like mine does. Well, there you have it, everyone. These are my unpopular interior design opinions. And let me know in the comment section down below what your unpopular opinions are. What is something that you see everywhere that you're just kind of like, mm, that's not it. I wanna hear from you, let me know. Be sure to share with us in the comments section down below and give this video a like. While you're at it, we all know someone that could use a little help. We all know someone that maybe is doing some of these that you just don't agree with and you need to let know but you don't wanna tell directly so you wanna send this video to them. Be sure to do that because friends help friends and I will see you in the next one.